Hey guys, welcome to the fifth and last episode of Behind the Time Lapse. And now we're gonna have a look at probably one of my favorite Northern Lights clips ever, which is this one. This was shot in Lofoten back in February 2016, one year ago, and uh, it was one of those perfect Northern Lights for time-lapse photography because it was quite bright, but at the same time not moving very fast. Because you know when they're moving really fast, it's beautiful uh, to watch, but it can be uh, complicated to capture them in, in a smooth way uh, in a time-lapse. Uh, they often become very hectic and chaotic. So this one was uh, perfect and I headed down to the beach uh, with my uh, Sony a7R2 and the Sigma 20mm f1.4 lens which I'm filming with right here. Uh, it's a really bright and nice wide angle lens. I uh, pumped the Sony up to ISO 6400 uh, which I think still gives a relatively uh, a noise free image. Definitely usable to me. And I put uh, the interval to 3 seconds. Uh, and that was because uh, the exposure uh, was set to 1.6 seconds. So when you're trying to do Northern Lights uh, photography and uh, especially time-lapse photography, you have to keep your shutter speed and your interval as short as possible to get uh, that really nice slow movement as you can see uh, in the real-time Northern Lights. Uh, so this camera is not the fastest one in terms of buffering and uh, saving it onto the memory card so uh, you need at least one second I think for for this one to to properly process the data you, you capture. I shot for about 25 minutes and ended up with something like 500 images. So in post I didn't do very much to this uh, image I did a bit of uh, just a white balance and some contrast but what annoys me a lot when I see star time lapses and northern lights time lapses is these airplanes which are uh, going all across the sky uh, you will see a lot of that so I prefer to actually remove those airplanes and there are two methods you can use to do that both of which are uh, extremely time-consuming uh, there might be other solutions which I don't know about yet uh, if you know any solutions this uh, please comment below because I would like to know because this takes a lot of time so in this example I did uh, remove all the airplanes simply by uh, doing a spot removal in Lightroom. So I went through every single frame and when you have 42 megapixels uh, pictures that's not exactly like a very fast task to do. Uh, there are a lot of details and even the small small airplanes will be visible. That took me two or three full days uh, but I think it ended up really well. Uh, the other uh, solution which is a bit faster but not necessarily gives you the best result uh, it depends on the shot so you should try either one of them but that is going into After Effects and doing a uh, just simply masking by duplicating the top layer and offsetting it by uh, one frame and just mask every single airplane I did that for uh, this particular clip uh, where I ended up with something like 90 masks and uh, that also took a whole lot of time and you have to animate the mask. It's just an extremely time consuming job. Uh, you'll spend a lot of time doing that but it's definitely worth uh, your time in my opinion. I think that's a key to success by really, really uh, perfectionating every single time lapse and every single frame that there are no things that shouldn't be there. And uh, if you want to have a completely natural look uh, and, and with, with lots of airplanes, just as it were in real life, you can do that. But uh, for me, this is more uh, like art. So you can remove those airplanes if that's what you want. I, I wanted to make a nature 
time lapse it was going to be about nature there were not going to be people in it uh, maybe a few houses down by by the fjord or something like that but the nature was supposed to be in focus so i thought those airplanes were taking away my focus from the northern lights i also did another bit of cheating on this one was because the ocean area in in the image took up too much space especially when I was doing the cinemascope crop so I actually scaled down a bit of the ocean uh, to make more of the beach and more of the northern lights visible in my shot so that was uh, easily done in After Effects by masking and feathering that mask and moving it a bit up knowing how to use After Effects is uh, extremely useful when doing time lapse it's an extremely complex uh, program where you can do so much stuff, but at least know the basics and it will help you a lot and save a lot of shots. Anyway, that was the end of the Behind the Time Lapse series. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I know that I didn't go really in depth in this series. I just uh, scratched the surface of what I'm doing, but I hope it gave you a few ideas of how you might uh, continue working on your time lapses and how I, I do stuff and um, how much work that's really put into it and uh, always remember that gear is not the most important thing, post-processing is not the most important thing, the most important thing is be at the right place at the right time. And that is my number one tip always when I uh, talk about time-lapse photography. I'm definitely going to go more into detail in other tutorials, I have a few up already, check them out if you haven't done that. And in the future, I'll make something more uh, in detail. Uh, so make sure to subscribe to check that out. And thank you for watching.